Hey, what's up everybody? Isam here bringing you another video. This one going to be the last Isam opinions of the PGR because this is going to be 10 through 1 or 1 through 10, whichever way you want to say it. So obviously, the final combination of the PGR. If you want to see my other opinions before we start, it'll be in a playlist. I'll probably put all of them in a playlist uh, before this video goes up. So you can go watch those. And then finally, we are at the 10 through 1, so let us just get started. So from 10 up, we have Abadango, Mr. R, Komura Kiri, Captain Zack, Larry Lur, Ally at 5, so this is now top 5, 4 Debuzz, 3 Nairo, 2 MK Leo, and 1 obviously 0, which is like a super countdown, but that's beside the point. So let's just start off with 10, Abadongo. So Abadongo, in my opinion, like, he had a really mediocre season. He got a lot of 9ths, he got top 8 of Genesis, but other than that, he got a lot of 9ths, a lot of 13ths at pretty much every single event he went to. I don't think he top 8, he didn't top 8 Frostbite because he lost to like Black Yoshi. He didn't top 8 uh, Momocon, he didn't top 8 pretty much any event he went to until, like from Genesis, until Nairo Saga, where he got 5th beating, or I think he got 5th, he got top 8. I know he beat Como in top 8, I don't remember if he beat anyone else, but he had an amazing run there, beat a lot of strong players, including Samsora with Meta Knight, and a few other things. He had a really close set with Ally that he kind of threw because he started throwing Shadow Balls instead of just spamming forward air, but you know, that's my, you know, I learned how to play anti-Mario as Mewtwo type of thing talking, but I also lost to Ally with my Mewtwo when I played him, so I guess I can't really, you know, throw shade. So yeah, Abba, obviously an amazing player. I was just really surprised that he got top 10 this season. I didn't think those accolades that he has were high enough to get that. I mean, top 8 at uh, two S tier events, but at the same time, someone below him in Salem had two top 8s at S tier events. Uh, obviously way more consistent, probably 9th and 13th being most of his other placements. Mostly 9th to be honest, he was the 9th place master this season, he had so many 9th places. But I guess that, in conjunction with the other top wins, was enough to get him into uh, top 10, so congrats to him for staying top 10. Number 9, Mr. R. So Mr. R had a bit of an interesting season because he got top 6 at Genesis, he didn't go to Frostbite, he got 9th at Civil War, which obviously isn't a top 8, still a good performance, especially considering how the other top players all did that tournament, either getting 9th or worse besides the Buzz, who I think is the only other person in top 10 to actually top 8, or not, and Captain Zack obviously, but the formerly top 10 to get top 8 at that tournament. Or So he was able to get top 8 there, he obviously had a set win on 0, but at the same time had a lot of random losses when compared to most of the top 10. He had lost to obviously Hikaru, who was at the time on rank, lost to Raito, lost to Canada. Again, those are two amazing players, but talking about the list, you know, it does hurt him when most of the top 10 are only losing to other top 10 or 15 players. Um, so like the, I feel like the biggest uh, blow against him is at this point, everyone above him has really high highs, and Mr. Art did not. His highest was, I believe, whatever he got at Genesis, which was fifth. Yeah, because Captain Zack got fourth. So his fifth at Genesis was his highest placement all year. He got second at Royal Flush, but second at an A tier is significantly less impressive than consistent top eights or consistently beating other members of the top ten, which he did not beat Zero, he does not beat Leo, he beat Nairo. He has a winning record on Nairo this season, which is very important. Um, he beat DeBuzz, or he did not beat DeBuzz, he did not beat Ally. I don't remember his uh, record with Larry, and he lost to Captain Zack. So going to, and then I don't know how it sets with Como going, I, I think they go back and forth. So that's his record with all the people above him, and so that's not a good look. I mean, he did get the win on Zero, he has wins on Nairo, obviously he has the winning record. I, he probably has wins here and there, but compared to everyone above him, he's just less consistent. Still an amazing player, but you know, Mr. R is the person, half because he plays Sheik and just half because I feel like something happens when he's in a last hit scenario, but he always, like, unclutches last hit scenarios or like I'm winning by so much time to get rage janked that happens to him so so much and also he is a free agent as well so much like I said with Mars uh, someone should pick him up because he's got like uh, but so going next is going to be Como Akiri at 8 so Como farmed 2GG's so hard. Obviously 2GG is his team so they you know liked to bring him out very often and he did and he would always get top 8. He got second at Genesis Saga I'm pretty sure. He got second in multiple other sagas, top 8 in other ones. Pretty much did really well there. Got top 8 at Genesis. Did not top 8 Civil War. I don't actually remember what place he got because for some reason I can't remember who he beat or lost to at that tournament other than losing to Larry but I don't know if that was winners or losers. Um, So I think he he didn't top 8 Nairo Saga. No he did top 8 Nairo Saga. He got 7th. He did didn't top 8 CEO, did pretty well at most of the A tiers he went to, again most of the sagas where he would get like 2nd through 5th pretty much. I don't think he had performance other than like top 8 at any of the sagas besides Civil War, so that's really impressive by him. Obviously an amazing player, super just consistently went to the sagas, consistently did well on them, and you know he obviously shows the rewards of it and also 
top 8 in two other S tier events, is going to get him top 8, has wins on many of the top players, uh, I think beat Leo, I think has wins on Nairo, and the Buzz, and Ally, and Larry, or I don't know his record with Larry, and I don't know his record with Captain Zack, but as far as I'm aware, he has wins on the majority of the top 10, uh, and you know, it's going to put him there, especially with his strong placements consistently at A tiers, and his two top 8 S tiers, that's going to give him the 8th spot. Next at number 7, we have the player that everyone is super outspoken about, whether in love or in hate, and that is going to be Captain Zack. So first off, I really like Captain Zack, he's a cool kid, you know, again, 15 years old, so just remember that before you start, like, hurling death insults at him, he's 15 and he's just having fun playing a video game. But anyway, amazing results, had a huge splash on the scene this uh, season, obviously had his uh, top 8 run in Genesis where he got 4th, he got 4th at Civil War, he got top 8 at uh, CEO, he did pretty mediocre at Nairo Saga, and to be honest, the majority of the middle of the season, so like the, the April to like early June, was very rough for him, he had a lot of random losses, to, to lazy boredom, to Some, or that was in February, but just he's had a lot of losses here and there that you know kind of hurt him, and everyone was like, "Oh, Zach is washed. Zach is, you know, super not gonna make top ten. He's not even that good. Salem is so much better." And then he comes back and gets top eight at CEO, and just so the end of the season was really strong for him, uh, and just had a really strong again top eight at three of the four S tier events. I think he's the oh, he's like one of the three people to do that. I think the other one is uh, zero, but just an incredibly, incredibly impressive player. Uh, you know, just obviously has amazing wins, amazing results, has beat almost everyone in this top 10 list, and he's probably not going to slow down. I mean, picked up by Phoenix, one really good pickup by him. Him and Tweak, I think, are going to be more of a doubles team now. Uh, they're both on the same team, so hopefully that can, you know, propel their results in doubles, because both players individually very, very good at doubles, obviously. Uh, he's top 10 this season, and I'm really proud of him, and hopefully he can continue, you know, this flurry of good results. And again, he's young, so I still hope that he is able to handle losses a little bit better in the future, but either way, you know, again, he's 15, you know, he's been winning a lot, then when he loses, it's like, ow, this hurts, and so he's not super good at, you know, not showing his emotion or something like that, so, I mean, it's, it's an understandable that he's emotional, and hopefully he can, you know, try to curtail that just a little bit, uh, because I feel like that's most of his negative press, other than people not liking his taunting because they're salty assholes, but I mean, yeah, so, I love the kid, super, super good. Number six, right outside the top five, is going to be Larry Lur. I think he dropped one from last season, so Larry, obviously, an incredibly huge tournament threat. Zero says he's one of the most, he's one of the scariest people to play. Uh, you know, Ally, he has such amazing sets. He's beat Nairo, he's also lost to Nairo. Uh, he's beat Leo, he's also lost to Leo. He's done so well versus the majority of the top 10 players. Also has some random losses, like at the time, Raito, he's also lost to a few other players that I cannot recall at the current moment. Um, that is just like random like well I'm surprised Larry lost to that person but then again Larry's kind of formula is lose early in pools and then get all the like run through all the losers bracket and get seventh you know he lost early at Civil War to foe didn't get seventh but still made it fairly far I think got like 13th or 9th at that tournament so from losing like in round one pool so that was really impressive by him just that losers run um, obviously incredible player best Fox he should learn down air field school stuff and that's my reservation with him because he doesn't do like the most broken fox stuff in my opinion he's really good at catching people's aggression he's so good at reading your defensive habits over the course of a set like the longer a set goes on in my opinion the better larry does uh, so that's why he i feel like he's more susceptible in early pools because a two out of three something happens lol fox got spiked uh he loses and then suddenly you know as the bracket progresses he gets the three out of fives and he starts just beating people systematically because he just learns how their defensive habits are he learns the 50 50 choices they like to go for and that's going to be like an honestly huge deal and that's honestly how he gets most of his set wins in my opinion just slow and steady uh recognition of defensive habits over the course of a set and it's absolutely amazing to watch and to play against uh yeah just an amazing amazing player obviously nothing short of respectable like one of the most respected players in the entire world rounding out top five we have ally the canadian mario main on cloud nine so obviously ally amazing player was ranked number two last season the former evo champ or the current evo champion because it does uh, that's not a way until evo starts or evo happens again so an amazing amazing player his his, he is so unbelievably clutch. He has clutched out so many scenarios where like, there's no way Ally's gonna do this one. Like, it can't keep happening. And then it always happens every single time. He's beat Zero like that. He's beat Larry like that. I don't know if he's beat Leo like that. I actually don't know their set count, but I know Leo wins the vast, like the large majority of them. The only time they play, he played Nairo this season, I'm pretty sure, was uh, at Tokaigi where Nairo kind of beat him in like two and a half minutes the entire set. Uh, but has beat Larry, has beat Zack. 
has beat Como, has beat Ramen, has beat Abba, you know, just every single player in the world, pretty much, he's beat. Ally's an amazing player, uh, obviously top 8 in Genesis, top 8 in, or like one Greninja Saga, I don't think he top 8 in Nara Saga as far as I remember, yes he did, he got 5th. So two of the three S tier events, he top 8 in. Amazing player, crazy reads, learn more Mario stuff, down throw up air footstool isn't that difficult, I can, if I can do it, and I don't play the character, you can do it. I mean, or not, because it makes Mario less scary of a character for me, and that's perfectly fine because I hate Mario. Just has lost a little bit more than the players above him, I feel like, and so that is what is going to keep him outside, and didn't win an S tier, and that I feel like is what's going to keep him uh, out of top four. And at fourth, we have DeBuzz, the person who won. I don't even need to look at my phone anymore because I know the rest of the list. Haha, -ha, magic. So number four going to be DeBuzz. Had a top eight performance at Genesis. Won Civil War. Consistently did well at every tournament he went to. But the thing is, compared to most people, he didn't go to that many tournaments. He went to only like six or seven majors, which compared to the rest of the top players that went to like 10 or 11 of them, very clearly has way less than him. But won Civil War. He won an S tier event, which only he, Leo, and Zero can actually say. Which is like a big deal when you compare it to everyone else. You know, I honestly, I think when I did my list, I put him at third. Uh, over Nairo because of the fact that he won an S tier, but Nairo went to more tournaments, won multiple A tiers, has a really, really good head to head with Nairo, or with the Buzz in particular. So I feel like those are probably the things that put him above the edge. The Buzz, one of the smartest players in the entire world, just has really, has just like pretty strong nerves, although they are starting to, I feel like, kind of crumble uh, in specific matchups like Cloud, and I know he felt it against me because I could tell from watching that he was very nervous when he was playing against me. So maybe it's a particular matchup, a particular player thing where he really doesn't have his nerves under control, but normally he does very, very well with them. Has the most consistent jank, which is why I don't really call it jank, uh, you know, just amazing record versus the majority of the top 10, and honestly, I feel like the lack of attendance is what is going to hurt him in terms of putting him higher. Obviously, had an amazing, amazing record, decided to go super casual mode and, like, play uh, Persona and play uh, Near Automata, or however you say that g game, and then play Breath of the Wild, and so that's why he wasn't going. He was relaxing a lot, because being a competitor is very high stressful, especially when you're going to event after event, and DeBuzz wanted a little bit of a break, so, I mean, good stuff to him knowing that he wanted and needed that break. Uh, obviously, he came back with a ninth at CEO losing to Leo and Renai, which both of those obviously very strong losses. So not going to be the worst thing, but still less consistent than the three players above him being Nairo, Leo, and Zero. So Nairo, I don't know how he does it because I see Zero suit Samus and to, in, to me, she is not a top 10 player. Obviously, I have a plethora of experience with that character and I understand how to play against that character very, very well with the majority of the cast. But he consistently puts his opponents into the scariest situations that is just guess or die. Guess and die, guess and die. And I swear to God, every single 50-50 that he has in order to win a game, he always guesses right. He always gets his rage kills. He always gets every single thing he ever needs. One Momocon, top aided CEO, top aided Nairo Saga. I, he got like 17th at Genesis losing to Mr. R and Zero. So like, that's not even that bad. He lost to two other top 10 players. Has lost to Mr. R a few other times, most notably twice at CEO Dreamland, I feel like. Uh, but either way, has wins on Zero, has wins on Ally, has wins on DeBuzz, or like winning records on the last two. So winning record on DeBuzz, winning record on Ally, I think an even record with Leo. Uh, he beat Zero for the first time ever, you know, at Momocon, or not ever, but since MLG 2010, or 15. So that's the first time he's beat him in a long time. Has wins over pretty much every other person. Does have some losses, like he's lost to Captain Zack, he's lost to Void, he's lost to a few other players here and there that I cannot recall at the current moment. But, or Locus, but either way, still has an incredibly strong resume. One of the strongest players in the world. The most entertaining streamer by far in the Smash 4 community, which is why he has such rampant success there and also his work ethic to like stream. I have no idea. I, one thing that I super 100%, 1 million percent respect about Nairo is he goes from the weirdest sleep schedule known to man because he streams from like 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. and then will just go to a tournament like a major and fix his sleep schedule and like top eight. And I don't know how he does it, because I'm a baby when it comes to sleep. I have no idea how he's able to do that. But he is, and he performs well consistently and considerably well. Like, he's, he's so good at that. And it's something I respect so, so much about him. And, you know, you obviously can't sleep on him. You know, and I'm honestly very guilty of that. Like, when I was doing my list originally, I was like, yeah, now I was like six or seven. And then I really crunched the numbers, and I'm like, oh, no, he's clearly top five. So, uh, you know, just... Obviously, shutting the haters up consistently because he consistently does well. The last last thing about him, he's the player that most in the entire world is like, I'm really nervous, this is really stressful, time to become the best player in the world, and he does that consistently. He is the best under pressure by far, and that's honestly what's going to take him very far in top eights, which are very stressful. People start flubbing, and he just gets better as 
like stress happens to him. As things get scarier, he always does better, and that's something I respect so much about him. Leo, obviously, one Genesis, has an amazing track record, pre beats pretty much everybody, uh, except Zero, I don't think he's beat Zero this season, uh, but he's beat everyone else, he's an amazing player, he does. He has a crazy win-loss record versus like every single person, he's so good. I'm so happy he was able to start traveling from Mexico, because this kid is amazing, and he's showing, you know, the people that went to Mexico, they're like, yo, he's like top three, he's top five, and you know, people are like, no, there's no way he's that. And then he, he is, he's the second best player in the world. He has nerves, he never gets nervous. I have never seen Leo go from playing really well to playing not really well. He always plays at the same exact line and it's just amazing. I mean, obviously he's the second best player in the world. Yes, he's lost to Kamame, yes, he's lost to Void, but at the same time, who hasn't lost to multiple people? Even Zero has lost to, Zero lost in a 6-4 matchup against Latai, right? So yeah, like Zero or Leo may have some losses that are questionable, but literally every single person in the world does because welcome to Smash 4 everybody, it happens. Leo, his spacing is immaculate which is why he's able to get tippers consistently with Marth, proving that yes, Marth is better than Lucina because Marth is Better than Lucina. Consistently gets Tipper Sidebees, consistently gets anything he wants with his Cloud. His Meta Knight, even though it's the farthest in his pocket, is still amazing and he played Ken with him and both sets of that were fantastic. He's just so good with every single one of his characters. He is by far the best at utilizing perfect pivots in the entire world and he is what I actually model my perfect pivoting off of because his, just, his ability to bait and to scare people into like thinking he's going to approach so they want to swing back and then he just perfect pivots out of the way and jabs them and then gets whatever he wants. It's so amazing. He's so good. Went to Japan, beat everybody. Came to America, beat everybody. This kid is the real deal. He is so good. I don't think he's gonna be figured out anytime soon because it's not like there's anything to figure out. He's just godlike. And the reason I say godlike is because there is only one actual god of Smash 4, and that is going to be Zero. The number one player beat everybody, won everything. I mean, obviously I'm exaggerating, but he's beat literally everyone he's played. I think he has like two um, people that he has not beat, which would be like Seagull Joe and Latai. And I think other than that, he has beat literally everyone he's ever played against ever. Uh, he's won multiple tournaments, won won two S tier events, always top eights pretty much. We got like 49th or whatever at Civil War, and then he got 9th at Greninja Saga, the one that anti beat him, and that's it. He's top eight at every other event he's went to. He's the most consistent player in a game that has such rampant inconsistencies. It is so impressive. Just, he's, what else can, what else can we say? His results literally speak for themselves, so I'm honestly not going to. He's just, he's a fantastic player. The best player in the world, hands down, and yeah, that is going to be it for the ESIM opinions of the Panda Global Rankings Volume three. Again, if you want to watch any of the other ones, please feel free to in the uh, playlist that, I, that it will just like auto autoplay so you're, you don't even have to do anything for it. As always, social media and panda and partner stuff is down below and I will see you all next time. Oh, bye bye